Hey, welcome back to Poor Pete's. Hey, today I was going to show you about uh, an old school plow plane. So this plow plane is a, um, this is Ohio Tool number 28. And uh, you can see that right on the front right here. I'll try and show that to you. Ohio Tool number 28, if you can see it. It's an older plane, so a plow plane can make a groove in a piece of wood within a certain amount of uh, parameter right there. It's kind of like a molding plane with a fence. And um, so, anyways, I love this wooden plane. I love how wood planes work. A lot of people already know that. And um, I like the wood screws on here. I absolutely love the wood screws. One thing to note, and whenever you're using uh, anything with wood screws, whenever you're done using it, just loosen them just a little bit. Because uh, if you don't, that expansion and contraction over moisture, content in the air, or uh, temperature, it's going to make that, that wood screw start cracking and breaking in different spots, which, which naturally happen over time. So, anyways... A little bit about this. I bought this without an iron, and I don't use a, a plow plane a whole lot of the time. So, one thing I didn't have was an iron. I haven't purchased an iron for it yet. So, I needed to make a quarter inch groove, right? And I'll show you what I was working on. I needed to make a quarter inch groove so I can put that piece of wood inside there, right? So, what I did was I grabbed a, uh, a molding plane. And this is my um, this is my tongue groove, quarter inch tongue and groove plane, and uh, I stole the iron out of it. And you can do that. And I will I'll actually show you something because this has this has that metal uh, guide in here. It actually indicates on that metal, so. On the back side of that iron, you can see that groove right there. So that groove right there, I'll show you on the plow plane. That groove right there is right here. So this iron goes right inside here like this and comes out on that guide riding in that groove. And that'll keep that that iron from moving all around, especially when you have a slightly bigger slot than uh, than what you're using, right? Another thing that keeps that on these wood planes that just have an iron inside of them, um, you know, more traditional wood planes, they're always angled like a wedge. You see that wedge? See how how it's tapering up really thin right there. So what that does is when you extend this iron down to start cutting that wood as it comes across, it'll actually uh, create tension that wants to push back up, push that iron back up into the, um, into the plane body. But because of this taper right here, it's small and it's big, so it's actually a wedge fit which is super easy because if you want to loosen this, it, you could tap it on the back and, and actually push it through and loosen it. You could tap it on the back of the plain iron. I mean the plain body. So this is the other wedge. So it's a reverse wedge. One is wedge one way, one's wedge the other way. You put it inside the, the body like that. And, uh, you can set your plane up. I love molding planes. You know, my grandpa, my grandpa really loved molding planes. He, he really loved molding planes a lot. So we got lined up in that groove and we just want just a little bit, a little bit of that popping through. Yeah, nice and sharp iron. Just sharpened it. So I think I'm a little shy of that. 
So I'm gonna take this and you can hear it bump, bump, bump. You can hear those harmonics wanting to start talking to you. So now when I set up my, um, my fence right here, just like you would a table saw, right? And uh, you, you can adjust these knobs. They have a nut on both sides. So you just measure from the center guide to the fence and uh, or you can measure from the iron really the steel and uh, you can measure exactly where you want that groove at right so this is just one way of making a groove in a piece of wood that's a really nice way I think so we'll just go ahead and make a pass right here yep absolutely nothing until the end one little tiny little nick right so we're going to tap that down just a little bit we're going to tap that on top. Make another pass. Yep, there we go. We're cutting now. But we're going to go a little bit deeper. There we go. Yep, that's, that's a good sound. <laughs> that's exactly what you want. see you can see how those uh, shavings they're not just rolling up even they're actually spilling out the side which that's exactly what you want you, you don't want the shavings bunching up like um, in a regular plane like le like let's say like uh, like a jack plane right you want that shaving coming right up out of the top of that uh, plane body in this one, you want it spilling out the side. So you show you something real quick. You have this uh, iron right here, right? But then on the, let me get a good image on that. I don't know if I can show this well to you, but this is cutting at an angle. This, uh, the bottom end of that wood wedge. If you can see that angle right there, it's actually, Maybe, there you go. You can actually see that. So what that helps uh, do is as it's cutting that wood, it can actually curl up and roll out to, to that side to actually relieve that wood, move it out of the way as it continues to cut. So uh, looking at the way the whole plane actually works, like if, if you were to make a plane like that, that's that's one of the, one of the things you really need to consider. So with us maintaining these planes and taking care of them, you need to, as that, you know, iron gets uh, shorter and shorter and the tolerance starts to change because parts are wearing out and stuff like that. Those are things you got to keep in mind as, uh, as your tools get older and need care and maintenance. Beautiful little wood shavings just something special he's an old hand to us now now this won't just keep on cutting it will not it's got a guide in it that steel guide has got them bottom out. I'll flip this over and I'll show you. It's getting pretty close. But what we got here is that, that steel guide right here that's that's guiding this this whole this whole iron and everything like that. It's gonna bottom out when that when the other wood hits this. That's as deep as it goes. So, yep, we're getting pretty close. That's it. That is it. That's it. So a nice old wooden plow plane. 
and cuts a nice quarter inch groove right there, nice and straight. And uh, the reason why you'd use something like this is if you were making drawers, you can make the sides of the drawer, the front and the back, box that thing in, and you could put this groove, you know, where that bottom uh, quarter inch sheet sets in that drawer or whatever size that you would need. And uh, lots of different, lots of different things you can use this for. Uh, some of the more modern ones, plow planes that are were all steel would come with a whole entire uh, bit set and, um, or they would call them combination planes and they could do a whole array of things. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed seeing an old plow plane back in action. It took a little while to uh, get that thing tuned up. And uh, when I bought this, uh, the handle was good. The body was good. Uh, it was a little rusted, but I took care of that rust. Um, I had to take a plane and uh, straighten up that fence because over time they get warped. Took care of the screws, straightened the, uh, the fence to these... Uh, the ends of the screws right here to make everything straight and square and uh, took a little bit of time on that but a great tool to have um, it's not one of my tools I use all the time but a uh, great tool to have so I really hope you enjoyed seeing that so if you stayed all the way to the end of this video hey thank you so much if you like this give it a like um, like and subscribe uh, turn on the notifications if you want to be notified anytime there is a video available. So, until next time, stay safe out there.